So did you finish your first five blocks? You know what that means? You're ready for more. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and we are continuing with our Sweetest Pie Bench Pillow. So I have to tell you, I'm pretty amazed. We got all five blocks done for the first row, like lickety split, split. We did it so fast, and thank goodness for Embrilliance Essentials that was ready for us and and uh, made it possible for us to get so much done in in two hoopings, right? So pretty amazing. Um, so you know what I was thinking. Remember when we did the two scoop sponge pillow, we ate a lot of ice cream like every day we were having ice cream and picture, people were posting pictures of ice cream. Why aren't we doing that with pie? <laughs> like really? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> anyway, there's really no time. I know we're, we're rushing through this one. So um, we are going to slow down just a tiny bit um, because my video editing software just crashes if I try to put 300 photos in one tutorial. It just doesn't do it. And so um, so I've broken the next set down into smaller groupings and hopefully you'll find that helpful too because it's kind of a lot to do all of an entire row in one sitting. That was a lot to me. So today we are going to do two blocks. So let's go ahead and get started talking about um, what we are going to do for these. So we are going to start with the pumpkin, pumpkin pie block, pumpkin pie. Um, it is our sixth block. And let's just talk about uh, what we need to be able to accomplish the pumpkin pie block. So this one is the whole pie and it's really cute. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. All of these, this whole row, I think is going to be pretty fun and, and a little challenging too. So that that's always fun. I like that. All right. So what we have for today. So the first one is, um, it's that light pinkish peach, um, silky solid, and it's a big one. So we are going to start with this at eight and a half by eight and a half and make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer so that you don't get puckering on this big piece of fabric. All right. So like I said, it's a very light pink, almost peach, um, more light pink, um, silky solid and eight and a half by eight and a half for the main fabric of our pumpkin pie block, pumpkin pie block. I'm having trouble with that. All right. So then we have our cream. There it is. Sorry. All right. So for our cream, this one, I want to point out again, that if, um, when you put it down on your, um, on your hoop, make sure to check both sides. If you're using feasible stabilizer, the side with the feasible stabilizer and the side with the fabric, they look very, very similar. So um, this one is just a very light cream and um, a silky solid, no design to it. And we're gonna start with this at two and a half by two and a half. And this is for the cream and it's a cream fabric, two and a half by two and a half. And then we have the velveteen. So this is the perfect color for a pumpkin. <laughs> Isn't that just perfect? And it's velveteen, how fun. So I wonder if this has a certain way. Yep, it does. So when we put this down, we're gonna have to look and make sure that we're not putting it, if we put it this way, it doesn't feel quite the same. You want it to be the soft way going down, the pile going down, maybe that's what it's called. Anyway, so velveteen, and we are gonna start with this at five and a half by five and a half. It comes in our embellishment kit. I don't think I cut it, I don't recall. Maybe I did, I think I did actually, I don't recall. <laughs> So much has happened in a couple of days. Oh boy. Um, five and a half by five and a half for your velveteen and don't back with anything. Leave it just as it is. Five and a half by five and a half for the orange velveteen. That's the filling for the pumpkin. And then we have our felt. So this one is the shortbread. So if you recall from yesterday's tutorial, there's a shortbread one, a graham cracker one, and a gingerbread one. And they're all a little bit different colors. This is the lighter one. So the shortbread, and we're going to use this in six by six. It's the felt. It's for the crust. Don't back with anything. Leave it as is. Six by six in the shortbread felt for our crust. All right. And then flexifoam. There it is. Thought I lost it for a second. Um, so for the flexifoam, this I'm sure will go underneath the cream. This flexifoam, we are going to start with at two and a half by two and a half, which is the same size as the cream. So I'm sure that's where we'll put it. Um, so the flexifoam, two and a half by two and a half. And then we are going to quilt this. So for our um, 
batting, it's always a half inch larger than our final cut size. And our final cut size is six and a half by six and a half. So that means we want a piece of batting that is seven by seven for our batting, seven by seven. And then we are gonna quilt this one with that really cute weave one. That will be so cute. And we're gonna use it in six by six. Weave one in six by six. And we're gonna have to, I'm gonna point out a, a few little tips on this one. We're gonna have to be careful um, around step nine, but the, the steps don't actually mean anything because we're gonna add our quilting. We're gonna do our quilting first. So our steps will be off, but we need to be careful not to trim um, to when we cut the felt, we have to be careful that we're only cutting the felt because we'll already have our velveteen down and all of that. So we need to be careful. That's one little tip. All right, so that is for the pumpkin block. We are going to start with that. And then we are also going to do the pecan block. So what I'm gonna do is merge these together. And depending on your hoop size, you can do them separately or you can merge them together. Either, either way will be fine. Um, so pecan pie, we're gonna jump to number eight here. There's a reason to my madness. Um, but we are going to do pumpkin and pecan together because they're actually similar. Um, and you'll see as we keep going. All right, so for the pecan block, we are gonna start with our main fabric. Now this is a directional fabric and it's cut the same. It's eight and a half by eight and a half. So that means that you have to watch when you put it down, depending on if you want it this way or that way, it shows this way in the directions. So this is the way I'm planning to do it. So the, just pointing out directional fabric, you wanna be careful the way that you put it down. So eight and a half by eight and a half, make sure and back this with fusible stabilizer and um, that's our main fabric for the pecan block. And then we have the velveteen again. So the velveteen is for the pecan filling. And this one is gonna be five and a half by five and a half again. Five and a half by five and a half. Don't back it with anything. Leave velveteen just as it is. Five and a half by five and a half. And again, watch the pile. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. It probably is, but um, you wanna make sure that it's the soft side going down. All right, and then we have gingerbread embroidery felt. Gingerbread is my favorite cookie. Did I ever tell you that? Oh my gosh, I love gingerbread. Oh boy, do I love gingerbread. All right, so sorry. <laughs> I haven't had lunch yet and I'm starving. So this is our felt for the crust. It is the gingerbread felt. You can see it's darker than that shortbread that we're using for the pumpkin. This one for the pecan is gingerbread. And we are going to start with this at six by six, six by six for the gingerbread felt for our crust. All right, and then we have some silver embroidery leather. This is for that tin, um, for our pie tin. Won't that be cute? Oh my gosh, this, I have to say, this is probably one of my favorites. I thought, I saw this one and it was just so cute, so fun. Um, I think the blueberry one also has some tin in it, if I recall. So anyway, this one, the tin, the pie, the leather, silver leather, we are gonna start with that three and a half by three and a half. Don't back with anything, leave the leather as is. Three and a half by three and a half. And that's all the parts, that's all the pieces, that's good. All right, so then we are going to have our batting because we're going to quilt this in the hoop. And our final cut size is six and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want a piece of batting that is seven by seven. So seven by seven for your batting. And then what are we gonna quilt this one with? We're gonna use Hobby Five. That's my favorite one of this set, although the weave is really cute too, but this Hobby Five just makes me think of baking, that's fun. Um, so Hobby Five in six by six is the quilting that we're gonna use for pecan, all right? So these two are actually pretty simple. There's some applique pieces to it, but they're actually pretty simple. I need to do we might be able to add more but only these two for this tutorial I promise all right so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you over to the computer and just very quickly show you how to um, merge them together and what size hoop and all of that if you decide to do two in one hooping so let's go to the computer Hey everyone, so I'm at my computer now and I'm going to quickly show you how to, a different way actually, a different way of um, bringing in both the quilting designs and the pumpkin and pecan pie designs and joining parts, but not all. So I'm going to go to Embrilliance Essentials and I'm on my nine by 14 hoop. If you're not, you can if you're not on the hoop you want, you can click on this preferences folder and click on whatever hoop size you'd like and then this um, 
compass button and H to be able to see the entire um, workspace of that hoop. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is bring in our quilting designs. So the first one is the weave one design. So I'm going to go to the quilting and weave one right there. And embroidery files, Pez is what I use for my machine. And we're looking for the six by six right there. Six by six, weave one. Double click on that and it goes to the center. I'm gonna leave this here so that I can bring in the pumpkin pie and have it um, go right to the center of this design. So I'm going to click on merge stitch file and the sweetest pie bench pillow embroidery files, Pez is what I use and we're looking for the pumpkin design. They're in alphabetical order so I'm just scrolling down and there's the pumpkin pie. Double click on that and it goes to the center. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I want these together um, but moved out of the way of the center. So I'm going to either, I can um, click outside of the area and drag down so that I've got both and you can check here, there's one and two, or you can just do it from here, scroll up from, and you're just making sure that you've got both because if you only have one of them and you move it, then you've defeated the purpose of, of having them um, centered together. So now I have both. I can see I've got the quilting design and the pumpkin design. So I'm going to click on the stitching and I'm just going to move it up here. Um, and let's see if that went to the center. Pretty close, but so no, if I were to move it again, then you can see I only have the quilting design. So that's why you want to always check and make sure that you've got both um, when you're trying to center it or move it at all. All right, so that one's good. All right, so now um, the next one, merge stitch file, and I'm going to bring in the Hobby 5 design, right? Let me see, pecan Hobby 5. Um, quilting bundle, where are we? There, and Hobby 5, and embroidery files, block by block, Pez is what I use, and then we are looking for the six by six. Right there, six by six, hobby five. Double click on that and it goes to the center. Now I know that this looks a little messy and um, overlapped and all that. It's okay to leave it there for just now. We're just gonna bring in that pecan pie and make it centered with this quilting design and then we'll move it. So merge stitch file and we're looking for the, let's see, pie embroidery files, Pez, and we're looking for pecan pie. Right there. Double click on that and it goes to the center and then you can, like before, click on the last two. So hobby five and pecan and then there you've got both of them selected and then we can just move it down here. You can also use your arrow keys, by the way, um, to move it. Either whatever you feel comfortable with is totally fine. All right, so those are now both centered and they're um, together. The only thing is if we were to join our, um, do that color sort right now, it's gonna join all, all of the items. And so let me show you a couple of things. So first off, actually I think I'll do that after. I'm gonna, hold on. Um, so let me just show you, if I open up this, pumpkin design. See all these default blues, light blue, default blue again. It will join all of those and we don't want that. We are only going to want the quilting designs to join. Um, but we brought in the pie design so that we can have them centered. So I'm going to show you a little, um, a little trick. All right. So I am going to go to file new page. It opens up a new tab here. Go back to the first tab and I am just going to highlight all four of these and I'm going to hit control C on my keyboard, go to this tab, click and hit control V to paste. All right, so then we have them all just like on this other one. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out the pie. So you can click on two and four and I'm going to just delete them. I know this seems a little bit weird, but it's just another way of doing it. We showed a different way yesterday. Um, that was a really interesting way, and here's another way. 
All right, so I tried a couple of things and some of them didn't work because you don't want your pumpkin and your pecan pies to join. And so this is another way of having it so that it just joins the quilting. All right, so now we have the one and two of the quilting design. So I'm gonna open up this first one and just like we did yesterday, we're gonna change the colors so that these will join. All right, so I'm gonna click on the first color Click down here on color and the first one that comes up for me is dark aqua and I'm going to say okay. And then number two, click on the color and the first one is blaze. And it doesn't matter what color, like I mentioned yesterday, as long as um, you're using the same colors on number one and number two. All right, the two different designs. All right, now we're on three. This is the placement for the main fabric. Click on the color, and we already used dark aqua, so now we're gonna use marine. That's the next color comes up, it's just easy. And then on this one, number four, we're gonna click on Oriel. We already used Blaze, so we're using Oriel. And then I don't want these to join because they're um, probably different colors for our thread, so we wanna stop. Um, so that we have a chance to change the thread color. So I'm gonna just click on the color and the first one that comes up is Sprout. All right, so all of number one is done. Number one is this weave design here. Number two is the second one. So if we click on the these, go through just the same way, we want the same colors. We have default one blue, we're gonna click on the color and we know that we want dark aqua because that's what we used on the first one and we want those to join. All right, so number two, we want the same color as before, which was blaze. You can see it right here, one, two, and two, two. All right, and then for two, three, we want marine. So we're gonna click on the color and find marine. All right, and then this number four, we want Oriole. Click on the color and choose Oriole. And then for the default 17 turquoise, we want something different than sprout. So we're just gonna use the second color, which is sea green. All right, so those are done. Those should join perfectly. Right now we have 10 steps. We should have six because we didn't join the quilting design. So I'm going to go to utility color sort and it'll create a new tab or we're gonna make it create a new tab. It says it reduced it by four changes. We're gonna click new view. So we currently have one tab, two tabs. We'll have a third tab. There we go, and then those are joined, and that's exactly what we wanted to happen, so let's just check it real quick. There's the placement for the batting, the tack down of the batting, the placement for the main fabric, the tack down for the main fabric, the quilting design first, and the quilting design second. So those are perfect. So now how do we get those pumpkins back in here? Not pumpkins, sorry, the pies, pumpkin pie and pecan pie. So remember we put those in number two here, we're in tab two, and look at, if we just take out, let's see, we can take out hobby five and weave one, and then we just have the pie and they stayed where they are. So look at, if I go and I highlight both of those, hit control C and go to our third tab that has our quilting design already joined, and then hit control V, and look at, they're right on top of there. They are after our quilting design. So our quilting design is already merged. Here, I'll close this so you can see more. Here's our quilting design that's already all merged together. We'll join together. We'll be able to do all of that. And then we'll go into the pumpkin pie separately and then the pecan pie. Wasn't that really easy? <laughs> Pretty cool, right? All right, so then none of these are joined and we don't want those joined. We only wanted the quilting design joined. And so when we created a different tab and did a... a control C to copy it and bring it over to the other tab that kept them in exactly the right position. So that just was a really easy way to do it, I think. So um, this one is all done. So I'm going to do a file, save stitch file as, and it's just saving this third tab that we're on. <clears throat> and then let's see, where are we? Yep, this is the, I'm saving mine in the folder that has all of my embroidery files for Sweetest Pie. And I'm gonna name this pumpkin and pecan, if I can spell it right, pecan, pie, pumpkin and pecan. And that then I know that those are joined together with quilting and I'm gonna say save. And like I showed yesterday, if you have your machine on, which I don't, um, but you could do utility sent to Solaris or you can send it to um, save it to a USB stick and bring it over to your machine. Either way, this one is done and ready to go.
All right, so don't forget, I want you to share something that you're grateful for. I want something different every single day. Um, today, I'm gonna go with health. Health is a big one. So um, I am extremely, extremely grateful for my health, my family's health. We're all doing really well, and, and that's a good thing after the year we've had. So I, I'm extremely thankful for health. I am strong enough that I can get on a treadmill and go for walks. Um, it's too cold to do bicycling right now, but normally I can do that. And I lost a lot of strength this year with all the cancer stuff I went through, but I am back to feeling really well. And um, that's that's pretty huge. So to, for me, it's health. What is yours today? What are you thankful for? And my shirt today, I love the color. I love this one. I got it from my local um, Fred Meyer, but the design says, don't let anyone dull your sp sparkle. Don't let anyone dull your sparkle. Um, so my, I got my feelings hurt a couple of years ago and I decided I needed this shirt and it just, it, it's a really fun shirt for me. And I will add information under this video of where I got the design. Oh, and I added little uh, rhinestones to it. I love rhinestones. <laughs> gold rhinestones to go with the gold metallic sparkle thread. How fun is that? <laughs> Gotta add a little bling, right? Mm -hmm. 